It looks like we have our first question. We have Steve has a question. Um, Steve, you're on the air. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little envious of some of the cats in my neighborhood because uh, there are certain cats that seem to be able to walk around and be independent. And uh, I've always wanted to try to do that with my cats, but I'm always worried that if I let them kind of have an outdoor life that they would get hurt or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. How do you determine whether or not your cat would be okay if you uh, let it kind of out in the neighborhood and what kind of dangers are involved in that? Well, there are a lot of dangers with cats being outside, especially cats being loose outside. Uh, there are dogs, there's traffic, there's rat poison, there's antifreeze, things like that. Um, we really don't recommend having cats outdoors mm -hmm. at all. Um, if you wanted to see how he might react to being outside, you could try a leash and a harness, um, but it's, it's not a good idea. Um, and most cats truly are happier indoors. Um, I've met very few cats who don't enjoy being inside more so than being outdoors. It's much more stressful outside actually for them too because again there's so many things that they have to deal with and so many dangers that they have to try to protect themselves from. It's, they're co like constantly vigilant and that's a really hard thing for them. Okay, thank you very okay, much. Okay, you're welcome. Thanks for calling, Steve. Uh -huh. So, um, cover some things to help them make cats more uh, secure. What have you learned in some of your research about how to better provide for the cats in a shelter setting? Um, we, we did find, when we first were uh, looking into opening up our Charlotte's Cat Corner, um, we wanted to find out what experiences other shelters had what mm -hmm. things they tried that didn't work for them, things like that. Um, and we actually found a study that was done in Canada of several shelters, um, simple enrichment, which were things that we were already doing, like providing toys and a little bit of interaction and some bedding, um, nearly doubled the adoption rate within one month of a cat's um, arrival at the shelter. Wow. Um, and more so than that, it dramatically decreased the number of cats who were sick. So decreasing their stress a little bit made them much more healthy. Um, so we, we really, um, we're pleased when we heard that, <laughs> and that made us go um, go forward with our Charlotte's Cat Corner um, even more confidently because we knew we were not going to have sudden rampant cages or cases of uh, of colds that we were really going to have to treat frequently. So um, okay. we we definitely found that, that that was beneficial to do anything that makes them feel more like they're at home. Excellent. Okay, it looks like we got another call. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, uh, I have a cat I found five months ago, and now she's in heat, and I can't afford to have her spayed. It. What can I do? Um, can you, if you can afford ten dollars, you can have her spayed at Anti Cruelty Society. Um, we'll do that for anybody. Um, if you really can't afford that, even then, you probably qualify for our low income clinic. You can give our clinic a call and speak to the receptionist, and if you qualify, then spaying in that case is free. Oh, okay. great. So check our website or give us a call tomorrow uh, between 10 and 4, and you can find out about making an appointment for that. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thanks for calling. And it looks like we have another caller. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Do we have a caller? No, I guess not. I guess we lost that caller. Uh, but we have another one who hung up again. So third time's Hold a on charm. One. one more caller. Hello. Hello. Hi. You have a question? Uh, yes, I do. Is is there any way to tell if your the cat that you have would benefit by having another cat come in to keep it company? Um, that's really difficult, actually, to, to tell. I don't know of any way to know for sure other than if your cat sees cats outdoors, what its reaction is. Um, beyond that, it can be kind of tricky to tell. If your cat, in general, handles stress well, then, then that's a good thing. So if you're, when your cat goes to the veterinarian, if if it's handling it okay. Um, if you have moved at all since you got the cat, if the cat settled in pretty quickly. Um, if when you have company over, your cat doesn't run and hide. Those are all good things. It doesn't necessarily mean that he'll accept another cat in the house, but um, you've got a better shot than if your cat doesn't handle change or stress very well at all. Okay, thank okay, you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Okay, and I believe we have another caller with another question. Caller, you're on the air, please. Oh, hi. How are you? Good. Hi. How are you? Hi. Listen, I have a question for you. Um, we got a cat from you guys November the 4th, and we're having such a great time with him. Oh, good. But um, I, I have a bit of a concern because he's starting to climb in the bed uh, with us at night, and I don't really want him in my bed. Is there anything that I can do 
to stop that. The, the last couple of days, I've put him in a cage, and I really don't want to do that. Okay. But if, is there anything that I can do? Um, if you, you can try just closing your bedroom door, if he'll accept that. I know some cats just scratch at the door and cry and do things like that. Um, I feel so guilty when he does that. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, that's something you'll, you'll, you'll kind of have to get over that feeling, though, because if you, I mean, if you really don't want him in the room, then there's going to have to be some way that, to barricade him and teach him to stay out. Um, dogs are a little easier to train in this way. Cats are not so easy, so you really just kind of have to use barricades and prevent them from accessing the room. Okay. Um, and, you know, certainly he has the rest of the room or the rest of the house, so he's got more room than being in a cage. Uh -huh. So that's good. So if you'll accept just having the door closed, do that. Um, you can try playing with him a bit before you go to bed for like 15, 20 minutes to kind of tire him out. So when it is bedtime and you close the door, he's more likely to just go off and some, go someplace and go to sleep because he's not going to have the energy to fight to get into the room with you. Okay. Okay. That sounds great. And then my final question sure. is, you had mentioned earlier about toys and if you have the same toy that eventually they'll get tired of it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions for toys besides oh the goodness. little play mouse? Or? I do, actually. Um, there, there are a lot of toys that are good. Actually, if you want to go to our website, um, on the behavior and training page, we have an archive of behavior tips. And we have a list on there of toys that we recommend. There are about 10 different toys that we recommend for cats. Um, I can, cat Charmer is a really good one. Cat Dancer is a really good one. So those are two right off the top of my head that I can recommend that are very easy to get. But check our website for a list of other toys that we suggest for cats. Okay. That okay. sounds real good. Thank you so sure, much for your help. Sure, you're welcome. Okay. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.